Welcome to Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 Midterm 2 Practice Problem Screencast number 7.1. Describe a divide and conquer algorithm to compute the solution in order n log k expected time. We're encouraged to use randomized quick select, quick select with a randomly chosen pivot, which has expected runtime in O of n for any array of length n and any order statistic. So remember, quick select takes two arguments an array that we're looking for, that's of length n, and an order statistic between 1 and n, it finds that order statistic in the array, like the seventh smallest element if the order statistic is 7, and it does it in expected O of n runtime. So it asks us where might the log k term in the running time come from? Well, the first thing to think about is what's of size n, what's of size k? Our array a is of size n, and our array positions is of size k. Uh, Positions is also sorted. Of course, <clears throat> we could easily sort it in k log k time, so even if it weren't, we could make it a sorted array. So it seems natural that this log k term is going to have something to do with positions, since that's the thing of length k. So that's a good starting point. And then we can ask ourselves in this divide and conquer algorithm, where might a log k term come from? And there's actually a lot of places. So there's one that I would expect it to come from, but I just want to mention there's tons of other places we could consider. For instance, we might have a really simple recursion tree, just a stick, uh, and if it had n levels, and it had log k work at each level, for example, if we're doing binary search in partitions at each, sorry, in positions at each level, then we would end up with n log k work. So that's one way that it might happen. Uh, maybe instead we've got a tree and it has n leaves at the bottom. And maybe the work in the base case is log k on each of these. So maybe each of these spends log k time. In that case, the total work would be n log k. And if that dominates the work in the tree, then again, we would get an n log k. So I want to emphasize there are lots of places that this could come from. But if we don't have any other information, and we just want to guess where a log term might come from in a divide and conquer, well, then it probably comes from the usual place that a log term comes from in a divide and conquer. And that is from the depth of the tree. So here's another tree that we might imagine. And we could imagine that the depth of this tree is log of k. And in that case, if we've got balanced work per level, if we've got n work at each level, then we'll end up with n log k work. And that's probably the most natural place for a log term to come from in a divide and conquer solution, unless we see something else. And actually thinking about it, this, this binary search idea seems promising. So let's keep that in mind as well. But if we are going to have divide and conquer, and it is going to have log k depth, what it means is that we're going to be dividing this positions array probably in half. Uh, at each recursive call. It doesn't have to be in half. As we've learned, there's lots of ways we could divide it and still get a log k bound on the depth, especially since we're looking for an expected bound. But let's try and make our recursion as straightforward as possible. Let's imagine that the size of the positions array is k, and down here, the size of the positions array is k over 2 and k over 2, and so on and so forth until we get down to maybe 1 or 0 as our base case. Now, what's happening to the array A during this process? I don't know. Let's, let's think about that later. But if we want the depth of the tree to be log k, then we want our base case to be in terms of the size of the positions array. And we want to break down the size of the positions array by some constant factor each time. And dividing it in half seems like a good starting point. So how could we divide the positions array in half? Well, uh, it's sorted. So we can always take the middle element. That'll also be the median element because it's sorted. So, you know, we've got positions here. And here's the middle element. Uh, I'll just call it P. And we'll grab this middle element and do something with it. Uh, the natural thing to do with it is to call randomized quick select, since we're told to call randomized quick select. So maybe we can call randomized quick select on the array A and P. And that will give us back the pth smallest element of A, and it'll do it in expected linear time. So we end up with the pth smallest element of A, 
and we want to have two subproblems, one that's only got these order statistics and one that's only got these order statistics. Uh, now all of these order statistics are smaller than p, so if p is you know, 25, so it's the 25th smallest element, then everything we're looking for on the left hand side is less than 25. It's the 23rd smallest and the 18th smallest and the 5th smallest and the 2nd smallest and the 1st smallest or something like that. And everything we're looking for on the right hand side is larger than 25. So what's interesting is we can actually divide up the array A as well. If we pivot A around P, excuse me, if we partition A around P, we use P as a pivot, then we'll end up having A the array A separate out into two other arrays, everything less than P and everything greater than P. Uh, now can we do that? Can we partition A around P? Well, in our diagram here we can afford to spend linear time at each level. Does it take linear time to partition this array A? Yeah, sure, it takes linear time. We just go through all the elements and we throw them into one list or the other, the lesser list or the greater list. So that's fine. We can partition it around P. And then what we know is all of the uh, order statistics on the left, they can all be found in lesser. And all of the order statistics on the right, they can all be found in greater. So we really have subdivided the problem. Now there is no guarantee whatsoever that lesser and greater are about the same length they could be completely unequal in length. And maybe this is where an expected bound comes in, or maybe it doesn't matter. Let's think about that a little bit later on. In the meantime, let's try and get a bit clearer on how we would break the problem down. So we have kind of a diagrammatic sketch. Let's start writing this out as a pseudocode algorithm. So we would say, well, what's our base case? Um, we kind of said one up above. I guess we could use zero. I'm personally more comfortable with using zero. Um, yeah, what the heck, I'll use zero. So if the length of positions is equal to zero, then we're just going to return an empty array. And that'll take care of our base case. Otherwise, let mid be the length of positions divided by two. And um, by the way, I haven't given a name to my function yet. Uh, I'm going to jump back up and do that, but I'm not going to specify the arguments quite yet, because as I write mid is the length of positions but divided by 2, I'm thinking about, well, do I really want a low and a high uh, instead of having an array of a particular length? And if I want a low and a high in positions, maybe I want a low and a high in the array A as well. So I, I'm just going to write a name for this, and I'm going to leave the parameters blank for the moment until we figure out what they should be. Uh, did we, were we given a name? Nope, we're just supposed to describe a divide and conquer algorithm. So I'm going to say um, find all. It's not a great name, but it's short, and I want to keep it short. And I don't know what the parameter list is quite yet, so I'm going to make room for my parameter list, but I'm not going to write it in yet. OK, so if the positions array is of length 0, then I know I've got nothing to return. Otherwise, I'm going to have mid be positions over 2. And then I'm going to find the middle item. So let, it's, it's not necessarily the median item, by the way. It's just the middle order statistic that we're looking for. So let uh, mid item equal randomized quick select called on my array A at the moment and positions brackets mid. So that should find me that middle item. Now I'm going to partition A around mid item into lesser and greater. And I'm not going to write the details out of that because we've already seen it many times before, so it seems fine to just say it at this high of a level. OK, now I need to find all the rest of the elements and return the result. So I actually want to return uh, everything on the left. Let's come back and figure that out in a moment. Plus just mid item, because that is the middle position I was looking for, plus 
everything on the right. So how do I get everything on the left? Well, I'm going to call find all. And what am I going to call it on? I need a positions array. I need an A. And that should be about it. So I can pass in lesser, because lesser is my A at this point. And I can also pass in just the left-hand side of positions. So I'm going to pass in positions 1 up to mid minus 1. I'm going to make a little more room for that. That's kind of cramped. Let me just erase what I have here. Okay. So that is positions the subarray from 1 up to mid minus 1. Okay, And then um, I'll put this on the next line plus mid item plus and then I want the right hand side so that's going to be find all greater so all the elements to the right of that middle position and positions mid plus one up to n Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, me personally, I might have stopped right here if I never did an example, and I would have messed things up terribly. But if we, well, terribly, I would have messed things up slightly. If we jump up and look at the example that was given to us, what we've just done will work pretty well. What we're going to end up doing is, in our positions array, we're going to pick out five and grab the fifth smallest element. So we're told what the fifth smallest element is. That's easy. It's 16. So we'll pick out 16. And then we'll partition A into lesser and greater. Lesser is going to be, let's just go through and do it, 15, 3, 12, and 10. 15, 3, 12, and 10. And greater is going to be 19, 21, and 18. And then we're also going to be breaking up positions into two halves. So I'm going to call those LP and RP, the lesser positions and the greater positions. And LP is just 3. And RP is just 8. Now, the third smallest element of L is going to be just what we're looking for. 3, 10, it'll be 12. And sure enough, 12 is the third smallest element of the original array. But what is the eighth smallest element of this array? There is no eighth smallest element of that array, right? So we need something else. Uh, we either need to go through and modify positions, which is probably fine. We can probably go through and modify positions. Or we need something like an offset that will let us correct for those right positions. And all that's happening here is the same problem we ran into when we were writing quick select and deterministic select. Once we've partitioned the array and we recurse into the right half, the greater half, We've thrown away a bunch of smaller elements. So what used to be the 150th smallest element is no longer the 150th smallest element if we've thrown out 100 elements. It's now the 50th smallest element instead. So we need to throw out the appropriate number of elements. So I'm going to jump down here and figure out what is the appropriate number of elements to throw out. And then I'll modify my function so that it's going to take as a parameter an offset, a number of elements to throw out. So what is the appropriate number of elements to throw out in our recursive call on the right here? Well, we're including greater, but we're excluding lesser and mid-item. So we've thrown out the length of lesser items, and we've thrown out one more item. And that, again, should sound a lot like quick select. So I'm going to pass in the length of lesser plus 1, and that'll be my offset. Okay. Uh, and then up here, I'm going to take in my array A. I'm going to take in positions. And I'm also going to take in an offset. I have to actually use that offset. So when I call randomize quick select, I should not be looking for positions bracket mid. I should be looking for positions bracket mid minus the offset. And finally, when I make my other recursive call to find all on the left, I need to pass an offset in. And the offset I want to pass in is just the one that was given to me initially. 
And when I see that I'm using offset as the third parameter there, I should also be looking down here and saying, wait a minute, presumably this is also dependent on the offset. So it's not just lesser plus one, it's lesser plus one plus the offset. Okay. So now, how do I call this initially, this find all function, which is really now more like my helper function? So I might say select all as my original function. That's a slightly better name, too. A and positions. And it just needs to call into find all. So it's just going to call find all on A and positions. And it's going to pass in an offset of 0, because initially we haven't thrown any elements away. So that sounds kind of good. We started by thinking about what this meant in terms of runtime. But we haven't really checked to make sure we're going to get an n log k runtime. So I'm going to do a really high level check now, but we actually need to prove in the next part that we take order n log k runtime using a recursion tree. So I'm not going to go into lots and lots of detail. Uh, obviously, our base case takes constant time. That's no problem. In our recursive case, we do make two recursive calls, just as we were imagining. We make one on the left and one on the right. Now, how big array A becomes? when we partition it into lesser and greater? We don't know. They're, they're both smaller than the original, but the sum of their lengths is a little bit less than the original. It's no more than the original. So that much we know. But lesser could be very, very small. Greater could be very large, or vice versa. So we don't know how that split went in some sense. But we do know that positions was split pretty much exactly in half. So that's good. Uh, and computing offset, that, that takes constant time. That's no problem. Uh, we did a partition. Our partition takes linear time. So this is a theta n time step. We called randomized quick select. That takes order n expected time. We computed the mid. That takes constant time. So I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, we appended these arrays together. Maybe that takes linear time. Maybe it takes constant time. I, I don't really care because I've already spent linear time, so I'm not going to worry about it. So we're going to end up with a recurrence that's something like t of n is equal to, let's actually not say n. We've got two parameters, right? We've sort of got n and k, but k is our key parameter. So for the moment, I'm just going to say t of k is equal to 2t of k over 2 plus theta n or c times n. So that kind of looks like the right form for what we did up above. So I'm just going to leave it at that at this point. Um, maybe this is n log k. It's promising. We'll prove it next time.